Whoa, indeed. Hello, world. Thank you for that. Uh, thank you, everyone, for being here. What is up? Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Matt Forte, and we are here live at the Build Studio in New York City. Now, I don't know about you guys, but especially after last night's episode, I feel very comfortable saying this. The doctor is back, my friends. Oh, man. Yes, applause. <laughs> Uproarious applause. 13 made her triumphant return this past week with an epic two-parter, which brought back not only everyone's favorite Time Lord and the fam, but, spoiler alert, and I mean this seriously, if you haven't watched the first two episodes, I'm going to spoil a big thing right now. I'll give you two seconds. Turn your heads. You all watched it, right? The Master! Oh, my God! I was blown away. Anybody see that coming? Uh, yes. It's amazing. Series 12 is off to an incredible start. Uh, I am beyond thrilled to have our next guest here with us. Uh, folks... Crazy amount of noise. Mandip Gill, Tosin Cole, and the doctor herself, the great Jody Whitaker, is here. How about that? Come on. You hear him? Very excited here. I bet you are at home as well. Uh, we're going to bring him out in just a moment, but first, I believe we have a trailer for the latest season. So let's go ahead, run that clip. Crisis. Big crisis. Serious crisis. Big serious crisis. Kisses. It's quite French, that, isn't it? Who are you, Doc? You don't know me. You're the woman that brought us together. Something's coming for me. We'll be right here, by your side. Let's go. Welcome to the end of your lives. People can save planets or wreck them. I will take everything. Ah! Get away from them! Be the best of humanity. Consider as you hope restored. Fancy a trip in the box? We gotta save the world! My goodness, ladies and gentlemen, crazy amounts of noise. Jody Whitaker, Mandy Gill, Cousin. We want to do one more? I think we'll do one more if we, no, save it, let's save it. It's quite a bit. Um, thank you uh, everyone for being here and thank you guys. My goodness, congratulations. Uh, heck of a way to kick off series 12. Super exciting, super fun. I'm, I'm thrilled that you're here and I'm, I'm really excited to talk to you guys. How's everybody doing? How's, how's life right now? Well, I'm better because last time when I was here, I didn't have my friends with me. It was me and Chris and we were all alone. You're not friends with Chris? I'm really good friends with Chris. <laughs> But every time that someone asks like a, a like a, a grown up question, I went friends, and just kind of sat and smiled. But I was like, why are our friends not here? And now you're the grown up. I'm the grown up. Now I'm the grown up. <laughs> Poor you guys. What an interview this will be. <laughs> It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm excited you're the grown-up. And also, it's a safe place. A lot of fans, a lot of love. While that uh, trailer was playing, you received a gift. I did. And, <laughs> and I, I must have done it so, like, so calmly. And so I was like, it's brilliant, that. I, I put it, it straight on. Thank I don't know you. if you can see. It's absolutely beautiful. It's a friendship bracelet. It yes. says, don't panic. And I really smooth it. It goes in my outfit and you didn't even know. I'm delighted. But that is brilliant. Took a bus. <laughs> did you make the bracelet on the bus ride over? Or was it? Yes, brilliant. you did. Fantastic. Thank you so much. And you have absolutely nailed my costume. It looks fantastic. Beautiful. Um, but yes, a lot of fans, a lot of love in the room. That's got to be nice. Have you found that most places you go, it's it's a beautiful fandom, and there's a lot of really excited people waiting for you everywhere yeah, you walk definitely. into. Yeah, definitely. I think the for us being new in the in the Who universe that kind of inclusion and that celebration of it, whether you are brand new to it as we you know, were particularly last season or if you have been a part of this family for a long time, I think that's what's lovely about it is you never get kicked out of the family and the new ones get welcomed in. So it's been, that's always nice. And I always think people, if they're angry about something or don't like it, they don't often we're say it to your face. <laughs> they don't wear outside food. No, they don't, say, they don't say it to your face. So you generally, you kind of have this like weird thing where everything's perfect because I only hear the nice things. So. <laughs> she needs to go on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'd say maybe she doesn't. 
I don't Why? know anybody. Why? So, no, I don't know that anyone needs to go on Twitter necessarily. Um, you know, talking about uh, amazing experiences and, and being surrounded by a beautiful fandom. Last night, you guys did a screening uh, and a Q and A. Yeah. And to my understanding, it was your first time seeing part two of yeah. Spy Fall. What was last night like for you? What was that experience like? It was intense. It's amazing, actually. I've not had too many um, opportunities to watch watch an episode with the audience. So there's parts like you just sat in, you know, you watch it with your friends or your family and there's a little, <laughs> but yesterday there were like big laughs, laughs and like claps and stuff, wasn't <laughs> yeah, there? Yeah, Which, yeah, I'm not used to. Yeah, we were a bit good because Tosin, Tosin's line got one of the biggest responses. And I was like, oh. Hey, you know, it happens, you know, you just got to go with the flow. <laughs> take every moment, take every moment. Were you surprised by, by the response when, when that sort of stuff happens? Yeah, because you just, you know, you're just watching it as everybody else. And when people react like, crazy and I was, oh okay oh maybe i'm quite funny oh thank you yeah, yeah. you know i can give you a little sup a little pat on the back you know what i mean adjust yeah, the like seat a, a bit you know what i mean like yeah i got one i got one i got one <laughs> i think as well it's uh, this is such an obvious thing to say and we've been doing it for so like we've, we've you know we've been actors before this but you forget the you, you it's such a surprise seeing the bits you're not in right. and you are like you know mouth open and i I was laughing my head off at Brad with his shoes. I just, I couldn't. And because, like, obviously you guys are there, and there was also an experience that these guys had with the left. Yeah. Well, you've often talked about. And I'll say it, say it, say it. I wasn't there. So basically, you've got to tell us. Yeah. You know the, the scene where Graham, Yaz, and Ryan are coming back off the plane, and we get the, the message from, um, out, yeah, in Essex somewhere. And then there's a lady, right? And then we were filming and she was had a, like an a iPad, I think she had an iPad, and she was recording us. And we was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Someone tell her that she's like, not allowed to film. Like, no, 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 we was like, something. No, no, no. And then she's like, no, 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 no. She's in, she's in the scene. And we was like, oh, <laughs> oh, uh. Brad yeah, yeah, like, yeah. As, as you were, as you were. It was like, were. It was yeah. thought, we thought she was hilarious. So we got through it, but laughing our heads off. And like, we thought we were proper smuggler. Oh my God, did you see that lady who yeah, walked yeah, onto yeah. the set? And they were like, no, she's part of it. She's the same. I was like, pie on fit. <laughs> That's one of the things I've heard you guys talk about a lot, is that you laugh a lot on set yeah. making the show, and you have a blast making yeah. the show. And I think a lot of that fun and energy does, it comes through at times, and you can see you guys are having a blast. Yeah, it's yeah. wonderful for that. And I think that, it is long hours a lot of the time, and it's an absolute pleasure to be on set. But you know, some, we, we don't always get tropical climate no, in Cardiff, don't. and it can be four o'clock in the morning. But that was hill. Jodie's rule when we first got the job. Like, I remember when we did the first reading, and she's like, Guys, I've only got one rule banter. Like, I don't want no, <laughs> no dull moments, just banter. So I was like, All right, cool. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's my rule. Not learn your lines, <laughs> but banter. <laughs> and also, it's like my mate, like, but it's important as well, I think, as actors, that you sometimes we get the status that we don't deserve in the sense of we're there the shortest amount of time sometimes, and the crew have been there before you've got there. But we, if we wanted to be appallingly behaved, we'd get away with it. But our thing was like, it's got to be equal status throughout. Like if, we're, if you, you've, we've got to have, uh, you know, really, we've got our banter that maybe sometimes is real, really abusive and crosses a line <laughs> with everyone. And it can't just be that like, we we just wanted to make sure that everybody felt that this was their space because yeah. essentially we're coming into their family yeah. and particularly the crew, some of the crew have worked on it for years and years way before before like we've been introduced to it so it was it was just important that it, it we built on that rather than in any way kind of distanced ourselves from it. Coming into uh, you know your second season with these characters coming into series twelve, we see a little bit uh, just with the characters their level of confidence versus series eleven. You know we open up, everyone's excited to get back with the doctor. They're making excuses. They're getting out of work. Did that happen off camera as well? Were you guys was there a confidence coming back to the show for series twelve? Uh, uh, feeling a little more in your own skin, feeling a little yeah, more. Yeah, sure, man. You know, the first season was like you know everything was new. You know, new territory, new showrunner, new style of show, like new cast, everything. So. I think we was quite, you know, aware of what was going on. But I think this season, we just came into it just confident. You know, we're all familiar with each other. We all knew what we wanted to do and where we was kind of going with our characters and stuff through conversations we had with, like, Chris Chubnall and stuff like that. So, yeah, we were just excited to be it's, back. I guess it's a little bit method in a way because you are figuring it out in the first series, our first series together. We don't really know each other that well. We are trying to figure out relationships outside of work, which I think is then portrayed on screen, which then after a year, I'm pretty sure people can 
see it and write for it. So by the time we've come into the second series, we know each other really well, and our characters at that point know each other really well. We've established our strengths and weaknesses and what we bring to the team, yeah. personally and as a character. So I think it was just it's just a natural progression, which is what I think you see on screen, is that we are just naturally closer to each other. I think as well it helped our first block for those for the two parter. A lot of it was shot in Cape Town. So we our last day of work on this was like the 18th of December 2018 and then our first day filming was uh in like the the 15th of January in Cape Town. So we'd only not seen each other for three weeks but it felt like a long time and then we were on all we we're all on his holiday <laughs> so we were just like this is amazing happy new year it's raining in cardiff we're in south africa and so you start you start in that kind of energy and we were welcoming in these really exciting cast members that we can now talk about we can talk about them now because you've seen it <laughs> We can talk a little bit about it. I'm curious, uh, you mentioned like having conversations with Chibnall and talking to Chris and stuff. And for my understanding is he's got a very specific vision. Everything's mapped out. Nothing's by accident, right? No. Like he's, he's figured out exactly the story he wants to tell. When you're working with someone with that like precise vision, how much room is left for banter or for you to bring some of yourself to uh, the character? I think I think say it's hard because he's not here. But if Brad was sat with us, I think it, you definitely see the, particularly with yeah. Graham, the energy yeah. and the um, the, the, I suppose you know the things like Doc and and yeah, all that. He, he has he has put loads of little touches in that relationship that you created was obviously there on paper. But I think naturally there's a natural spark between them two. Um, because sometimes I watch it and I, I I wonder, did they put that in? Like, did did they write that for Brad or did he add that? Or yeah. There's a little thing where you fell on the stairs in the episode that you've seen. And I was like, I wonder if they've written that in or if he's figured that out himself. But I think you get more confident as you go along. And there is sort of like room to work with Chris, but he knows what he wants and he's already sort of set it up. And he, he knew Brad as well, didn't he, before? So he knows yeah. he's just a joke. Like, he is like that. I think I, I'm really lucky, particularly having a relationship with Chris that's previous yeah. to this show because I've it, it, the, he knows the Doctor far better than I ever will. But in the case of this Doctor and my Doctor, it feels like I never have to question what he's given me because he, he he's writing for me. And I think because he knows me so well... It, we, my energy feels like it's on the page, and and also that freedom to make choices that are sometimes bold and good and bold and shocking. You know, like it's it's there. There's a safe space for that. But as far as you know, I would I I've, I feel like with every writer that comes in as well, they've they've done so much work that it's it's there to be played with, but it's not there to be improved in it. It's way. like um like a colouring book in a sense, you know what I mean? Like they draw us the outline of what the picture's supposed to be, then we just add our little colours and just colour it in the way we feel and the way we wanna express the characters I feel. So you know what I mean? I'm stealing that. This next interview I'm saying it before the questions even happen. It's not even gonna be applicable then how are you doing colouring <laughs> books? Hi, I've got I want to talk book. about colouring I've books. got an acting colouring book coming out. <laughs> <laughs> if I totally misunderstand what you said, I was like colouring book. Yeah. <laughs> Sounded good when he said it. <laughs> Uh, Jody, I was revisiting some behind-the-scenes stuff from uh, Series oh. 11. It, it, no, it was, fun. it was an interview you had done, and you talked about filling these shoes and coming uh, back yeah. in, uh, you know, coming into this role, right, mm. and, and walking into this world. And you had talked about having a lot of fears because of, of, like, these big ideas that you would hope la that would land and so forth. And I'm curious if you remember what some of those big ideas were and, and what it was like seeing reactions to that. I, I think, I suppose, for me, knowing that the... The Doctor has very many different sides and the joy of being a actor coming into it is that essentially you're not there to repeat, you're not there to try to be somebody else, you're there to be you and and to bring your colouring book to <laughs> <laughs> to the role. That's but, nice. Thanks. Edi I like it. Is that yours? Did you and then like, yeah. I don't think that's the, the way it's supposed to be drunk. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> I've misunderstood it, I've misunderstood it. But um, I think what I really adored in the writing and particularly in the conversations I'd had with Chris was this I loved the idea and I know I've said this before so sorry to the Whovians who know this but just the 
Uh, <laughs> book. Uh, accent, is your accent? What? <laughs> Am I on Siri? <laughs> is that what it is? Don't worry. It's we live it. in a really weird time, no. don't we? What? I've got such major technology so, paranoia as well. Yeah, so for me, I'm like, how ah. could you not working on this show? I know. And I was in Black Mirror. Can you imagine? Yeah, my brain's yeah. like completely fried. Um, but yeah, I think the thing for me was this. I loved the idea of the of of the thing about the youth and the thing about uh, children without it ever presuming that children don't know more than us. Like well, there's this presumption that we teach them everything. We don't. We don't at all. We learn so much more from the youth of today. And I think we have some pretty incredible speakers at the moment who are a lot younger than all of us here who are very profound. And I think it wasn't to, it wasn't to strip layers away to make my doctor child. Like it wasn't that. It was just more, I love the idea that with a child, if you turn the lights on in a cave, everything is fascinating. Whereas an adult goes, how do I get out? How do I get out? It's too dark. That corner's dark. There must be something bad in there. And what I really wanted to find, particularly in the first season, was that f the fizzing energy that you're given through regeneration and that thing of feeling that all, all of it's, you know, I'm not quite who I am. When it sits into it, I wanted it to feel like a, it was positive and that in all this change, this continual change that comes with loss for the Doctor continue, you know, th through the history of the show... And, and the, the, the things that they've seen, that they don't lose hope. And I wanted it to come from an open-heartedness. That might not be everybody's cup of tea. <laughs> so it is, it is when you're running at a million miles an hour and you're speaking at a... And I now do ADR afterwards and regret every single choice where I spoke quickly. And I'm like, oh, God, I've got to try and match that. But yeah, I just felt that, that the brain is working faster than maybe I can work was... And it might not seem like a big choice it might seem like somebody else's choice previously but that's the joy of it it feels yours in the moment and because the doctor's such a freeing character to play you own it and you then move forward with it and but are not limited to it either well i for one have been a big fan of that choice and i've very much enjoyed watching that element of your doctor and one of the things i was curious about is how you all of you really strike a balance between the that that wonder, that joy, that that Doctor Who fun, but then you tackle an episode, you like an episode like Rosa, right? Yeah. Where like, how do you balance being respectful to this storyline, but also finding that fun Who stuff to fold in there? How how do you live in that area and straddle that line? Well, I don't know. I think a lot of it is already written for you. For instance, yeah. the Rosa Parks episode when you're in the little motel and it's something serious. That guy comes in, he's racist, but previous to that, you're on that bed going, "Am I Banksy?" And writing on the wall, like, <laughs> it's, it, a lot of it's already in there because it's written by the most amazing, talented writers. So I don't, for me personally, I don't go, oh, how am I going to find the fun and then do the seriousness of the, the context? It's already just there. Yeah. Like, the context is there. It's about, like, Demons of the Punjab or Rosa Parks. And then your lines are written for you. And then, and then like, like Brad and Tosin do, you, you create those little moments where it's you bounce off each other and have a laugh. But ultimately, for me, the, a lot of it is on the paper. But also, when we were on the bus, the, you, can't, you can't help but appreciate... Yeah, you've got to pay to the moment, the pay, to the truth, yeah. pay to the truth of the moment. Do you know what I mean? Like, even, yeah. yeah. Like, I just keep on thinking about um, my guy, the, the driver, how intense he was on the bus, but yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah. but like... Yeah, you're just paying the truth. You know, at that moment, it's very, it's very serious. It's a moment in, in time that changed history forever, or changed, yeah, just changed the world in general. So, you just got to play to the truth and just, yeah, just be truthful and and give it the respect it deserves. I think as well, it was a really, that that whole beat. Uh, Vanette Robinson, who played Rosa, her her grace as an actor, and and then playing those scenes where you know the moment is for her to to say no. It's, it doesn't, it, it doesn't, you, you'd have to be completely failing at all like, moments of your career if you're not listening to that. Like everything about that, it centers you and, and brings you back for, as, as Jodie, but then also as when you're in the scene and you're playing the role. And, and I think that that's what's so clever about particularly those episodes. And, and, and when in Demons, when we're walking away, yeah. the, the, the inevitability, but it's not battered off. But the 
there's nothing you can do. And knowing, and particularly obviously with history, you really can't be tampering with it. Yeah. Do you guys ever feel to, another thing the show is, is always done and is always known for is the way in which each episode sort of plays with a different genre. You know, you're tackling all these serious things and then you'll have an episode that's like a really spooky, surreal monster episode and stuff like that. Do you guys feel that on set when you're in the thick of it? Does it all feel just like Doctor Who as you're going through it? Or is like, is today uh, a scary no, day? It no, doesn't, today they, is they, they, no, they, there is a difference, isn't there? Like yeah. the spider episode. Uh, the spider you know episode. What we're doing at the same time because we do two episodes at the same uh, time. Witches. witches. Yeah, so then, oh, oh you're witches. doing one about yeah, the witches witch episode. Was brutal. And then you're doing one about massive, gigantic spiders that are out there. Yeah. But it do, so it doesn't all feel like, oh, this is, everything's really heavy and stuff. Yeah, and the sets play a big part, man. You know what I mean? Like, when you're in the ships and, like, the worlds they create, and it's like, wow, like, this is crazy. So when you have those kind of elements as well, it, helps, it just helps, gives it that weight and that texture, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> Can you remember that when we were doing Kablam and the <laughs> Sarang? And it was those two episodes, wasn't it? The hospital. Yeah. And, when you, and Brad was like... We we're only like second day, but first day, cause usually we do at least like two weeks on one episode and right. then, but we shoot two at the same time. And um, and so we'd been like the first day we'd been in Kablam and then we were in the, the, the hospital. And he was like, why are we in hospital? <laughs> and he couldn't work out where this hospital in the Kablam was. And we were like, no, Brad. And he was like, oh my God. And he get, I like, we was just like showing your age, love. And we were really, it just, it was so like, what? And it was so funny. <laughs> Funny. But you just, but, but I think as well for us, there are, there is, you know, there's darker moments, yeah. there's lighter moments, there's the stunt days, there's the, the days when there's seven characters and you have to get everybody's close up and everybody, you know, and then there's the ones where it's just us two or just us two. And yeah, so it always brings that, Do that you it's guys, always an adventure. You're doing two at a time. Do you have uh, an idea of like the entire season's arc? So, because like if everything's mapped out on paper, then I would assume as an actor, you want to be able to plant your own seeds within the performance. Do they? Is there a chance to do that? Is that impossible? Do you ha kind it's of just not, have to trust your writers? It's not impossible. I think we know the story arc, but a lot of it is a reveal because even to us, it's secretive, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. But you know, from from the beginning, I imagine you knew what yeah what the journey was of the character, and then naturally, there's little little bits that come in or that's tweaked and whatever. But they do then change the whole story arc. Yeah. So f for us as actors, we can go right. We're going to start episode here, and then my journey is X, Y, and Z. I don't know when it's going to come up and what episodes and how, but at least I know I'm going on that. And I think some there is often as well where. It, 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 you know, you get in your episode, and so there is times where I'll. It's not a. Com it's a very collaborative show. So with Chris, like, if uh, you know, if it's an episode that he's written, or you know, with and you, I've very often said, right, this beat is the is that I feel like. Um, I need you to maybe not explain it to me or be just like right get me here now because I think that beat is there or something like that and there are times when it's like oh yeah let's move that and the rewrites come in but it's always you all the story isn't being found on the day it's like it's there it's just sometimes they're like little moments and also then you get the dynamic of the new cast that come in and sometimes people bring an energy that you weren't necessarily expecting especially from the page and that just elevates it I know it's a completely different uh, universe, and I mean that in every sense, but you know, you've worked with Chris. Uh, I thought you could do Star Bart. Wars. She's Star Wars. But I was going to say, is there something like a shorthand or a way in which you communicate and collaborate with Chris that's similar, even though it's a different ballgame? Yeah, ball it's, in, game it's in the first episode. Really? Chris, basically, I'm just WhatsApping you to say that I've read this script, and, and I hold my phone and I walk around like that, and I leave him four-minute messages. And at the end, I'll be like, bye, babe, bye, 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 bye. See you later, bye, bye, bye. And they're like, and then I'll, sorry, did I ask you about that? And oh, my God, I'm exhausting. So, yeah, he's, he's done a little nod to me <laughs> in the first episode of this series where I'm, I'm uh, trying to get in touch with O. So, yeah, and it's all WhatsApp, and it's a WhatsApp monologue. <laughs> And I get, and when and I she like, holds it in the weirdest of ways, <laughs> who fuck, did, 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 who talks like that? <laughs> Me. So yeah, so I like to think that I I opened Chris's creative genius with that physicality <laughs> and he put it in. But yeah, so there you go. So that is how I communicate. 
Um, we're going we're gonna to go over to the audience in just a second. We've got a couple of questions that I want to make sure we have time to get to. But uh, I wouldn't be doing my job. You know, here we are. We're just at the start, just the first two episodes. Obviously, I don't want anything spoiled. We, we've seen trailers. We know Cybermen are on the menu. What are you excited about? What can you say that isn't a spoiler that you're really excited for us to see in Series 12? Well, we can't say a lot. Perfect. That is exciting. Let's go to the cool. questions from the audience. <laughs> <laughs> a <cu> You're a <laughs> natural. <laughs> Do you want to... No, but it, it, all I can say is it's way bigger than the last series, isn't it? It's, it's very epic, aren't it's they? Kind of emotional and, uh, I suppose, visual scale. Yeah. And it's more threads that's going out throughout the whole season compared to last season. Last season was like each individual episode, but now it's like threads and themes that continue along until the end of the season. Cool. Well, again, <laughs> thank you for not answering that question. <laughs> Perfect. That was great. No, uh, and sincerely, I, I can't thank you enough for being here. We're not done yet. We're going to do some audience questions, but it's just so cool to have you guys here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank honestly. you very much. All right. So let's go ahead and do it up. The first one's from Twitter. This is from at David Daffin. Uh, and it says, how do you even remotely keep track of your age, given all the time travel you do in the show? <laughs> how? The wrinkles. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my frown line. <laughs> I think, yeah, I mean, as the doctor, how do you? But, I, uh, but as, uh, yeah, as for us, I feel like just in two seasons, I've, you know, you kind of gained a universe worth of life experience. It's, it, it, I think something as well, the, the, the thing that I find really moving about it is that there's no, there's always a possibility to revisit something. So as you, as someone who is getting older in that, as the, the grown up, you know, you, you do feel like the certain moments are past or certain people are past or those kind of things. But the thing about Doctor Who's is always this, the joy that, that, that the end is not always the end. And I think, oh, you know, if it only could be an alien with two hearts and that was so, but you know, you never know. But I do find that like kind of bleeds into it. So it's going to keep me young. <laughs> do that <laughs> I don't even know I don't, I don't know just it, time goes by we go back you still get ID you're you know not know worried I mean? about your age I'm not I don't know <laughs> he got when we flew out to South Africa they asked him maybe oh, yeah. he had a chaperone <laughs> yeah uh, wait 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 let me <laughs> Wait, hold up, hold up, hold up. Give me the little pilot wings. Yeah, let, let me explain, because obviously pal. for the show, I'm clean shaving. Obviously, I've got a little oh, yeah, you really do scavenging well. a little beard right now. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, she was just like, yo, um, are you by yourself? And I was like, <laughs> I was like yeah. Like she's, like, you? <laughs> she's like, where's your passport? And I gave her my passport. She's like, oh, I'm so sorry. I thought you needed a chaperone. I thought you was like 17. <laughs> I was like, I'm a grown man. Like, <laughs> I'm a grown man. I'm a grown man. It happened twice as well. <laughs> Same thing on the get yeah, plane? going there and coming back. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Pretty incredible. Uh, okay, I got at least three in the room. Perfect. Let's do them up. First one right here on the green couch. Go for it, man. Hey guys, uh, thanks so much for being here. So my question is, uh, what was it like uh, working with Sacha Don Juan uh, for the two-part opener, and what was it like bringing back the master to Doctor Who? Oh, we have we have so much love for Sasha. He, he's been such a blast, hasn't he? And I think the thing what I like, he's he's such a professional, and he's so excited <laughs> to be it there. Sound terrible. No, but he he's, he's he's really passionate about his character. He's really thought about it, and we 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 started off with him in South Africa, and it, it, I just have so much time for Sasha. I also find him really funny. Is he, yeah, isn't it? He's in so real life, funny. he's got a lot of banter. He's a really great guy. But I think what was wonderful for us was um, we didn't shoot scene for scene in sequence, mm. but we shot the entirety of his of of O and yeah. that 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 persona and the last day of that block was the aeroplane yeah. and and our reactions are very like his yeah. transition just that slow thing the moving of his eyes where he's like got me and you're like ah and he's just this this yeah. performance came out and it was and it was so amazing that there's crew members that have worked on this for absolutely ages and they continually we're just like oh my god he's amazing and he is amazing and then obviously if you've seen the next episode yeah. the 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 transition you know him him owning every period yeah. and in such a terrifying way and he's mesmerizing mm. and he just but he's a really really wonderful human being and yeah. so for us to have the master as part of our journey through doctor yeah. who is so exciting but for it to be him and to know that his journey now in the Who universe is, is so 
is like so exciting and wonderful. When when you're working with someone like Sasha and you see that performance happen, does it, do you like any like fe not fear or like concern of like oh we're bringing the master back we have to do it right? When you see something like that, you go oh we're we're nailing it. Uh, does that uh, all melt away? Like when you like, see, but like, when he actually the big revelation that he came that he was the mo like I was like oh wow. Then when he started doing his thing, I was actually like oh whoa. You just do, <laughs> like, you don't worry, like, do you? Like he's just, he's just so spontaneous with it. Like do you know what I mean? You don't know what he's gonna do, what he's thinking. Yeah. He might he's also done it. You yeah. you are so confident that he's done his homework. So that you, there's no fear, like Sasha is the master. He's, do you know what I mean? Like we're not going, oh God, are we going to ruin the match? He is. He's done his work. We're just enjoying his And then performance. watching the episode again. And, and knowing and the knowing when, when he's like, there's a whole, you know, what's the, you know, what do you know about the doctor? And the, and when he wants to go into the TARDIS, that now with hindsight, and you're like, like, oh, you're awful. I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> So good. Great question. Thank you. We've got two more. Next one, you've got a microphone. Right over here. Hello, guys. Hi. I'm Matthew. Hi. I just want to say, love your outfits. Great A. Thank you. Fashion. <laughs> um, my question to you is, knowing that you're part of the Doctor Who universe forever now, how have your lives um, been affected, changed, like your outlook on life or your lifestyles, uh, having such a big responsibility of the show, but having uh, the notion that you're role models for boys and girls and men and women everywhere and anywhere? Oh. Oh, me? Oh. <laughs> we'll go, we'll go. Um, yeah, man, you just take it in your stride. Um, obviously, it's it's an amazing it's amazing to be a part of something that's been on for so long and it affects so many people and people love it. And yeah, I'm just happy to be a part of it. But um, yeah, I don't know how to react to being a, a role model. It just, it just, like, you don't ask to be a role model. It just kind of happens. So hopefully by me just doing me, I'm doing something right. And hopefully people can be inspired by what I'm doing. And yeah. That's great. <laughs> yeah, I think lifestyle-wise, it hasn't changed in that, like, on a day-to-day -day basis. But then we're sat here doing this, talking to people who love something more than we love doing it, and we love doing it. Like, yeah. it's 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 just, it, honestly, it's probably overwhelming, and I don't think I realise the gravitas while I'm in it, and it's only when I'm out after a couple of years, I'm like, oh, you still remember my small part on Doctor Who? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's just been so open-hearted from the start. We've been welcomed by everyone we've come into contact with, the fans and, and also the, the Doctor Who family that is in uh, Cardiff, the Doctor Who family that is, you know, way before any of us, you know, before some of us were born. And I think the fact that you're never kicked out the family and you're always in it, it sounds like, it sounds like a mafia, <laughs> the family. But it is, but it's like, it's, it's, it's so warm and inclusive and fun and, and knowing it, because working on Broadchurch was an introduction to Doctor Who because I was working with Arthur and David and, and, and the, you know, the, the, the like, the Whovian love throughout whenever we're on location. And he hadn't been the doctor for a good, you know, maybe like five, I don't know, like however many years. And so, but he's never not, and we're never not a part of this family. And I think if you're needy, <laughs> like me, that's wonderful. And all, also I think the, the beauty that anything is possible within this show and that this isn't like other shows. Like we are not limited to any rules. We're not limited to, I suppose, like human restriction, which often is put in place. And so for us, this is extraordinary because it won't be like any other job. And to be so, we've talked about being present today in another interview and interviewer asked us about, are we present? And it was like, yeah, we really want to be because I think we do realize how unique this is. It's a great question. Thank you so much. Uh, time for one more, and it's going to be right over here. Go Hi. for it. Hi. Hi. So you, all, you four was also badly. You're my favorite TARDIS team, and River Song is my favorite character. So I was wondering, if she were to ever come back, how would you want, like, what would you want to happen with her and your characters? I think, I think that the thing for us when we have been looking enough to have, you know, we've, it's obviously it's the villains at this point, but like with the Daleks and, you know, you've got Cybermen coming up and you've got Jadoon. The thing, and you've got the Master. The thing that's so exciting about bringing someone or something back is that knowing that the episode would be worth it. Like, it's not just a, you know, particularly the Cybermen. It's this, it's an incredible episode that you're going to be watching. And for us, it's, it's like if you're going to, use such an extraordinary relationship and storyline, it's got to be worth it. It can't just be for sure. And I, I imagine if Chris is going to do it, 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 it would 
blow everyone's mind and be a direction and a journey that the fans would want or be not surprising. But can we say whether it's happening or not? No, we can't. Yeah. <laughs> but I hope that somehow answers it. But I think don't use all these extraordinary gifts that we've got and don't you don't misuse them, I think is the thing. And that's what I love about Chris. I feel like he knows his he he knows his encyclopedia and, and with it when he is using this amazing history and these amazing relationships, good and bad, he's using it in the most creative and exciting way. And that if River Song is a part of that, that that continues. <laughs> a non-answer, I'm so sorry. You're pretty good at it though. <laughs> you look great. <laughs> like a t-shirt, she's got me on a t-shirt. <laughs> Um, I want to thank everybody for being here and hanging out with us today. You guys are fantastic, uh, awesome audience. You know, we started this talk out with like the outline of an idea of what we wanted to discuss. And I think together through our conversation, we've filled in those lines, <laughs> colored them in, if you will. <laughs> Much like that of a coloring book. <laughs> and <laughs> yes, yes. You've owned it, you've owned it. <laughs> Um, sincerely, thank you to all no, three that's of you. Cute. And thank congratulations you. for being here uh, and, and doing this and having another uh, amazing series uh, of this amazing show and, and being a part of this wonderful family, or mafia, as you refer to it. <laughs> um, going to get thrown back at me. <laughs> Uh, uh, everybody, you know where to find it. You know when to watch it. Uh, BBC America Sundays, you can catch it there. Um, and you can catch up uh, all the places that it's streaming. Thank you so much once again. Thank you, Thank guys. You. Everybody, a crazy amount of noise. Jody Whitaker, Mandip Gale, and Tosin Cole for Doctor Who. Please.